Welcome to Unit 6, Video 4, Weighted Atomic Mass. By the end of this video, you should understand why the weighted atomic mass does not equal the mass number, and you should be able to calculate the weighted atomic mass of an atom or a mole of atoms given the mass and abundance data. So how can we talk about the mass of an atom? Well, there's two different units that we could use. If we used grams to talk about the mass of individual atoms, we'd be working with incredibly small numbers. For example, the mass of one hydrogen atom is equal to 1.66 times 10 to the negative 24th grams. That's a really, really small number. So since it's inconvenient to talk about the mass of individual atoms in terms of grams, scientists essentially invented a unit to use. That unit is called the atomic mass unit. Atomic mass units are a, unit, a standard of measurement based on a standard. Basically, they decided to set the mass of one carbon-12 atom, so an atom of carbon with a mass number of 12, equal to 12 AMUs. In comparison, the mass of every other element could then be derived. The mass number, however, does not equal the atomic mass because in, an, in a sample of atoms, there are going to be different isotopes of that element. Remember, since isotopes have different numbers of neutrons, they'll also have different masses. So in any given sample of an element with more than one isotope, each atom will have a slightly different mass than the other atoms, depending on how many neutrons the atoms have, or depending on which isotope they are. So when we talk about mass number, we always talk about mass number in AMUs. It's the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. Since protons have a mass of 1 AMU and neutrons have a mass of 1 AMU, add them together, you get the mass of the atom in AMU. However, if we want to talk about the atomic mass, the atomic mass is going to turn out to be a weighted average of all of the isotopes of the element. We can talk about this in terms of AMUs when we're talking about a single atom, or when we're talking about a mole of atoms, we can use grams to describe the atomic mass. So while mass number is always in AMUs, atomic mass can be in either AMUs or in grams. In this video, we're going to talk about it in AMUs because we're going to be looking from the perspective of a single atom. However, from here on out, we'll generally talk about it in grams because it's more convenient to use larger samples of atoms given the size of an atom. So what is the atomic mass? Well, the atomic mass that appears on the periodic table is a weighted average of all of the isotopes of an element. So this is the average mass of the atoms of an element calculated using their relative abundance, how much of them there are occurring in nature, and the mass of each isotope. This is often called the average atomic mass as well. I like to abbreviate it as WAM, WAM. Essentially, to calculate the weighted atomic mass, we take the abundance of the first isotope and multiply it by the mass of the first isotope. Add that to the abundance of the second isotope multiplied by the mass of the second isotope and continue on for as many isotopes as you have. A here, again, is the percent abundance, and mass is the mass in AMUs, or in grams if we're talking about a mole of atoms. An important thing to remember, for percent abundance, when you're doing math, you want to make sure to convert your percent abundance information to decimals. So let's look at an example. We want to calculate the average atomic mass of chlorine, given the data below. So we're told that there are two isotopes of chlorine, one with a mass number of 35 and one with a mass number of 37. The uh, chlorine 35 has a more precise mass of 34.97 AMUs and a relative abundance of 75.78%, meaning in any given sample of chlorine, 75.78% of it will be chlorine-35. Likewise, in any given sample of chlorine, 24.22% will be chlorine-37. To calculate the weighted atomic mass, we're going to multiply the mass of our first isotope times the abundance of our first isotope. 
Notice this percent has been converted to a decimal for this calculation. We do that by moving the decimal place two places to the left, or by dividing by 100. Then we add that to the mass of the second isotope multiplied by the percent abundance of the second isotope in decimal form. When we do this, we get a weighted atomic mass of 35.45. Now, it's important to ask yourself, does this make sense? Well, since about two-thirds of our sample is chlorine-35, it makes sense that our weighted atomic mass is closer to 35 than it is to 37. Likewise, if you check the periodic table, you'll find that the weighted atomic mass, or the atomic mass appearing on the periodic table for chlorine, is 35.45. Here's one to try on your own. Pause the video here and work through this problem. Notice here we have three isotopes, so you'll need to add together three mass time ab times abundance values to get your weighted atomic mass. When you come back, I'll display the answer. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Notice I've chosen to use grams in this problem. Therefore, we're dealing with a mole of neon atoms as opposed to individual neon atoms, which would have been in AMUs. Also notice that this answer makes sense, given that 90% of our sample is neon 20, our answer should definitely be closest to 20. Before we end, I just want to talk briefly about how we get this mass and abundance data. You'll always be given that data, so you don't have to worry about collecting it, but I do want to talk a little bit about where it comes from. So we can use a device called a mass spectrometer which is pictured in a diagram below. It's actually a much more complex machine um, in real life, but we have a diagram with just the basic pieces. So what happens here is you essentially send a sample of a given element through the device. The device has a magnet in it, and that magnet is able to deflect the particles. The degree to which the particles are deflected depends on their mass. So particles with the same mass will be deflected by the same amount. Particles with a different mass will be deflected by different amounts. A mass spec readout looks like what we have here. This shows us that the most abundant isotope, the isotope that has the most atoms of that particular isotope in the sample, has a mass of 128 AMU. There are obviously some other isotopes here that are much less abundant and have masses slightly higher or slightly lower. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we looked at why the weighted atomic mass is not equal to the mass number. Recall the weighted atomic mass is a weighted average of all of the isotopes of the element, whereas the mass number is simply the protons plus the neutrons for an individual atom. Likewise, the mass number is usually reported in AMUs, whereas the weighted atomic mass can be in AMUs or in grams. And finally, we learn to calculate the weighted atomic mass of an atom or a mole of atoms given mass and abundance data by multiplying the mass times the abundance for each isotope and adding those values together.